All right, art students, we're going to look at um, some of the topics that you should be covering this week if you started with us last week. Um, if you're just starting today because you're in a different district, um, you will get to this content probably next week, but this should still be useful for you. Uh, so this video talks about the principles of design. So we will watch together. And then um, I've already sent you uh, a, a link to a Google form in SmartFox that I'd like you to fill out um, after we watch this, okay? So I'll play it one more time after we watch so you can fill in as we go. If every artist uses the same elements, then why don't we have a whole world full of Michelangelo? One answer is that great artists have an almost magical sense of design. Using the principles of design is about making choices, applying the basic elements of art in the most powerful way. Let's take a look at the principles of design, beginning with balance and proportion. In this 19th century work called In the Pasture, Julian Dupre gives us a landscape that's different from traditional pastoral scenes. This is a realistic painting and the hardworking peasants are central to the composition. Dupre knew how to use the design element of balance to show us the tug of war between the woman and the cow. We see different but equally weighted things on each side of the picture. The young woman somehow manages to keep her footing, visually and figuratively, because of the way Dupre balances the composition. Balance can be symmetrical, the same on both sides as in this Tiffany lamp, or balance can be asymmetrical, as in the work by Dupre, where one side differs from the other, but we still get a sense of balance. Proportion is about the relationship in size of one object to another. In a realistic painting like in the pasture, the painter wants objects to relate to each other just like they would in real life. The young woman seems small in proportion to the cow she's trying to manage. Painters can manipulate proportion to send a message to the viewer. If a figure is larger than life, you can be sure it's for a reason. The design element of emphasis is about a central idea, a technique, or a mood. In this work, Quietude, Mary Cassatt has sketched on a plate using a sharp metal tool, a process called dry point. She focuses on one of her favorite subjects, the quiet time between mother and child. Cassatt didn't complete the dress or give us a world of color because that isn't her dominant concern. Cassatt uses line to draw us toward a point where the two faces meet. She emphasizes only what's necessary to convey her central idea, the relationship between mother and child. Contrast is the design principle that emphasizes differences. As this photograph by Ralph Eugene Meteard shows, contrast can direct a viewer to a focal point within a work of art. There's a sharp difference between the darkness of the old house and the bright figure of the boy. The horizontal line of the steps contrasts with the vertical lines of the columns. Textures are also in contrast. Look at the feathery texture of the grass in front against the wooden steps. Perhaps the most haunting contrast is in the subject matter. Young children against this old ramshackle house. When an artist repeats an element such as color or line or shape, that design element is called pattern. This rain hat was made by members of the Native American Haida tribe off the coast of British Columbia. They used dramatic patterns of red and black. These skilled artisans borrowed open organic shapes and rhythmic lines from nature. The repetition gives a sense of balance. The pattern is repeated on all sides of the hat for a graceful ornamental effect. Repeating these symbolic patterns helped establish a cultural identity for the Haida people and made their distinctive woven wares appealing to American and European traders. Let's move on to two more principles of design, movement and rhythm. Movement causes your eye to sweep over a work of art in a certain direction. The curves of this African sculpture invite your eye to weave in and out. 
This figure represents one of the deities from the Shango religion, the powerful Thunder God. On the top is a double axe, the God's destructive side. So your eye moves easily over the figure and then comes to rest on this important symbol of power, the axe. Rhythm is also another important part of this figure. In music, rhythm is about the tempo or recurring beat. When you look at this figure, your eye moves and the curves and waves are rhythmical as well. We notice them not just once, but again and again. Unity means choosing from all the elements of art so skillfully that no single element takes over. The work is not about color or value or shape or line, yet it holds together as an entity. Edgar Tolson, one of Kentucky's most celebrated folk artists, pulls it all together in temptation. The serpent and the apples pop out at us because of their colors. The simple blocky shapes of Adam and Eve contrast with the swirl of the serpent. Tolson uses wood, paint, pencil, and magic marker to experiment with interesting textures. He's saying, move all around this piece. So this self-taught artist gives us a complete package, a work that's fulfilling to look at because it seems whole. When you're walking through an art exhibit, stop at a work that catches your eye and explore it more carefully. You might discover that in every powerful composition, there's a sense of rightness that comes in part from the way the artist chooses and uses the elements of art and principles of design.